the seal. Uh, Max is, is, is often said that if you respect the game, the game respects you. Yep. And uh, you know, from the scouting combine to Mobile, Alabama, the Senior Bowl, I, I can't count how many times I heard players, the prospects say, Max Crosby, Max Crosby. That's how I, that's what I'm emulating my game uh, after. What does that make you feel like when, when you hear that kind of respect? In the team? It's incredible. Um, you know, I got Kobe on me right now. He said, you know, the main thing you know, about being being legendary is inspiring the youth and bringing people along and, you know, showing people the way. And uh, for me, um, that's always been in the back of my head is inspiring others, you know, not, not only my teammates, but other people around the league and coming into the league. But, um, you know, for me, seeing that it's like the ultimate respect. And I take a lot of pride in that because, um, you know, I talk about it all the time, but I feel like my, my film alone uh, is, is different than everybody else in this league. And for me, it's not just about being the best in my position. At my position, it's about being the best. Period, and uh, you know, it's just uh, like I said, it's all from respect. Max, I know you've had the your routine a few years now, where you come into the building pretty much every day in the off season. But what was it like to kind of see the AP the same up to like thirty people that joined um, this off season? Where do you think that, that came from from the players? Um, yeah, I think it's just about you know, you know, AP challenged me early. Um, you know, just not it's not just about me. You know, great players. There's a lot of really good players, but. Um, you know, the great ones bring, bring others up. And uh, for me, I took that personal. I know guys like Spillane and John Jenkins, other dudes, you know, it helps when you got guys like that coming in because it, it gives the young guys no other option, you know, but to be here. So um, we wanted to be here and work together and just continue building what we already started. And, um, you know, I feel like this team has all the potential. We have more than enough talent to go out there and achieve great things, but all that is bullshit unless you go out there and do it yourself. So. Um, we got a lot of work to do. Um, it's April, and we're just excited, you know, for for what's you know what's to come. But all that matters is today, and uh, we'll, we'll worry about tomorrow when it gets here. Max, uh, you know, signing Christian Wilkins, putting him on the interior. You obviously on the edge. What's the potential of this defensive line right now? I mean, potential is one thing. Um, action is another. You know, for us, it's about the work. Uh, we have a ton of work to do. Me and Christian haven't played a single snap together. We haven't done a single rep together. So. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we got a, we got a ton of work to do. And um, I guess, you know, I've said it many times, Christian's a great player. Um, I've, I've been watching Christian and seeing his career from afar for a long time. Um, we went to, we had, you know, the touchdown club in Columbus when we were both like sophomores in college. We went there and met for the first time. We went to the combine together. Klee obviously is really good friends with him as well. So I've known him mutually for a long time. So um, I, I think everything happens for a reason. And um, I'm fired up to you know get to work with him. He was here, you know, today, and um, had had a ton of energy, fired up, and ready to go. So um, I know that you know that energy is infectious, and that's something I try to bring. That's something he tries to bring, and we just want to bring everybody with us because um, at the end of the day, we, you win and lose games in the trenches. If you got a dominant D line and O line, um, you're going to be in every single game, no matter what. So um, we're banking on that. We take a lot of pride in that, and um, you know we're looking forward to being you know being the engine. And the generator for this team. When you did watch him in Miami, what stood out to you, you know, in his game? Yeah, the, I think the main thing in his career that stood out to me is just the fact that he's gotten better every single year. If you look from a production standpoint, um, look at his one-on-one -on -one pass rushes, his games, everything is consistently getting better. And there's no, you know, there's no secret to why he should have got taken care of because of what he's done and how he's continued to ascend. And he's still young. And uh, that's something I really like to look at, um, especially with upcoming guys. Like, he was written off early too. You know, a lot of people were doubting him like his first couple of years in this league, and he's continued to, you know, you know, shut up all the doubters. So, I, I respect the shit out of that because I know what that what that's like, and um, I know what it takes. So, um, yeah, that's something that really stood out to me is just that he's continued to get uh, get better and better every single season. As you look back on last year, how difficult was playing through the injuries that you were playing through and just trying to battle every day? Um, I mean, it was a challenge, without a doubt. Um, but that's that's what comes with this game, you know. I, I look at myself like a warrior. Like, you're gonna have to kill me to take me off the field. And I, I tell my coaches that it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Like, I don't look at this like a game. Um, this is my life. I put everything into it. Um, I work literally all year round. Like, I mean. Actually, right here was like, do you ever go on vacation? <laughs> just ask me in the hallway. But like, I'm here every single day. This shit is not made up. It's not a facade. It's nothing. I, I talk about what I do every day. Um, 
and I take a lot of pride in it. So yeah, I was definitely banged up. My knee was a an issue, but I was able to play, and you know I definitely <laughs> you know, don't want to do that again and go through that uh, draining it. You know, multiple times every week, it was a pain in the ass, and then you know we made it through. So <clears throat> so it was even more motivation. You know, when people were like, "Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down." I was like, no, like I'm not like everybody else, um, to be completely honest. And uh, you know, I just had to keep keep moving. So recovery and everything, rehab has been incredible. Um, you know, I just did my conditioning test last week and smashed it. Um, and I'm feeling feeling better than I ever have. So um, it's been an incredible, you know, off season so far. Max, despite being as young as you are, you're one of the longest, you know, tennis players on the team. Been here since '19. Has it been surreal just to kind of think about the journey of being here with the Raiders as long as you have? Yeah, I mean, it is crazy. I mean, it puts it into perspective, you know, it's been, I mean, I don't know whether my rookie year seems like 20 years ago or two days ago. Like, it's it's crazy to me, you know, being back in Oakland, um, being in the Coliseum, like, I remember it like it was yesterday, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like that was in a past life that I, you know, went through that. Um, it's crazy how this, how life is, you know, everything is, is always on the go and I'm just staying in the day, so. I don't really have time to reflect and look back, but you know, just to look at it, it's like, damn, I'm already going into year six. Um, feels like I was doing these interviews. I seen one of my interviews a couple of days ago. Somebody sent it to me, and I had like bleached hair, no beard, <laughs> looking all type of crazy, no tattoos. I'm like, holy shit, we've come a long way. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's been a blessing. Um, you know, this, I mean, it's been a damn journey, and uh, for me. All that matters at the end of the day is winning, uh, winning for this organization. Um, I pour my heart and soul into this and I want to be the best leader and teammate I can be on a daily basis. And uh, being a Raider is something that's special to me. You know, I got real relationships from the owner all the way down to the janitor. And, um, you know, I'm here every day for a reason. It's like a family. You know, it's, there's not many teams that, you know, operate like, like we do. And uh, we just got to translate to, uh, that to winning. And, uh, you know, it's just exciting to get things rolling again. Max, along the lines of being a good teammate and leader, uh, Tyree Wilson, um, you know, he didn't have his benefit last year coming off an injury and being able to work. Um, how important is this offseason for him? And has it been? Have you, have you been able to check in on him and, and chart the progress? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I'd, you could ask Tyree. I'm always, always on him um, because I want what's best for him. You know, at the end of the day, when you're a rookie, you don't truly know anything you know you're just trying to learn and absorb as much information as you possibly can and um, put yourself in the best position to succeed and if you don't have you know a blueprint um, you're lost and I know like when I was young like I was literally relying off just playing my ass off and not quitting on anything you know what I mean that was my niche I was like all right I'll play everybody and make plays and I'll just make plays and get sacks just by <laughs> effort alone and um you know, a guy like Tyree, like he's got all the tools and intangibles and everything like that. Um, but for him, it's just about being consistent. It's it's not just what you know. What does that mean? Being consistent it sounds like you know cliche bullshit. But at the end of the day, you got to show up every single day and put the work in. And um, I feel like he's in a good spot right now. Um, he's got a ton of room to grow. He knows that, um, and he just got to keep showing up. You know, be be constantly curious. Um, and you know, if you're like that, you're you're going to give yourself the best chance to. Know, have success in this league because everybody's chasing the top dog you know what I mean it doesn't matter you can do it at a high level for five years like myself but I know there's more people that want what I want that's why I work the way I do I know everybody wants what I have and I'm, I, I refuse to let that shit go you know what I mean so this league is, is doggy dog you know what I mean so yeah I'm rooting for Tyree I'm constantly staying on him and um, you just got to be consistent and, and continue falling in love with, with the process Max, when, when Howie Long says that they'd find a spot for you on their offensive line with him, Milo Alzado, Kikel, uh, you know, those guys from back in the day, what does that, what does that mean to you that, that they think you would fit in well with those guys back in the day? Yeah, it's, it's super honoring. You know, it's, it's humbling to say the least. Um, those guys, I mean, that's what I look up to. At the end of the day, um, those dudes changed the game. They were pioneers in this, in this uh, organization. The guys like Lyle and Howie, I mean, the list goes on and on. Those dudes were absolute savages, and they played the game at the highest level. I mean, Ted Hendricks, another one like his. I mean, his wife is like family to me, and me and my wife. Um, Charles Woodson's the. I mean, I can go on and on. George Atkinson's, 
those dudes are the ones who set the blueprint. Um, and, and I constantly am asking, asking them questions. So to hear that from Howie, um, it's an absolute honor and it just gives me more inspiration to become the best version of myself. You know, I talk about it all the time. Like I've seen something, I think, I believe it was Chris Paul or somebody, um, it was a quote recently, but they were, um, or no, it wasn't Chris Paul. I, f I forget who it was, um, forgetting off the top of my head, but they asked, um, they asked him how, like, when did he realize he was great? Um, and he said, not till after I was done, because when I was in it, all that mattered was the day to day. All that mattered was how can I get better today? Um, you don't have time to look back and be like, oh shit, I've accomplished all this and blah, 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 blah. Like for me, like when I hear stuff about that, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But now what's next? I got to keep moving, keep moving. Because like I said, there's people coming for what, I, what I've earned and um, done on a daily basis, but I know I'm not even close to where I want to be. Um, in reality, I have 52 career sacks. That ain't getting me to where I want to go. You know what I mean? I have, I'm, I'm just getting started, and that's what that's what pushes me. That's being the best version of myself. Not only proving others wrong, but most importantly, proving the ones that the small circle of people that know what I do uh, right. Um, and that's that's truly all that matters. And you know, it starts it starts with guys like Howie Long, the dudes that set that standard. And I want to set that standard for the new wave of guys coming in the NFL. And um, you know, everybody that steps in this building, I want my presence to be felt um, in, in, in all the good ways. How do you find the balance, Max, in the day-to-day -day and all the things that you do from your podcast to the foundation and being a father of some training? Like, how do you find that balance that keeps you, you know, even and still managing to push forward? Um, you know, there really isn't balance in this, uh, in the world that I live in. Uh, right now, I'm, I mean, I'm obsessed. I, I do it every single day. I'm here. I mean, just talking about the same thing, but Ashley, was like I, I think I've seen you every single day I'm like yeah I mean that's what it that's what it requires to be at the top and at an elite level consistently so yeah I'm here from six to two damn near every single day in the off season that starts in January I go home immediately got to be a dad I recover when I get home I have the same exact routine every single day I got businesses I'm involved in I've got my podcast I got all this type of stuff but I have all the time and energy in the world because number one I'm sober none of this shit would be possible if I didn't clean up my life. So at the end of the day, instead of recovering from a long night or going out and doing this and wasting time with friends who really aren't there for me at the end of the day, I got the right people in my life, the greatest tight end circle I could possibly ask for. And I chase fucking greatness in every single way in my life, every day. So at the end of the day, that's the only way it's possible. Yes, it is stressful at times, but this is everything I signed up for and more. And I'm only getting, only getting started. I love this shit. I literally, I get emotional about it, talking about it because I know what it takes to be here. Um, but there's only a few select people who really get to see it every single day. And literally my wife is the only one who gets to truly see everything I do every day and my daughter. So I'm setting that standard for her. Um, my future kids, uh, everybody watching and you know, it goes back to Vinny's first question. Like people will talk about, you know, they want to be like me. Um, I, I, I do it for, for guys like that. I want to reset and change the game. I want to be a legend. I don't want to be a great player. I want to be a legend. And there's only a few, a few of those guys. So that's why I work the way I work. Max, uh, 10 days until the draft. AP said that he's not just looking for great players, but he's looking for guys who want to be Raiders and can play like Raiders, like yourself. Yeah. How would you define that when you look at a young guys like that when you got to college? Yeah, um, I think at the end of the day, I look at the things that require zero talent. Everybody's talented in the NFL, everyone's got ability. The things that matter to me are dudes that are consistent and they got relentless effort. Dudes that are curious and continuously are looking to find ways to improve. That's the dudes I look at. I don't give a shit if you went to Alaska State Technical Institute or Nebraska or LSU, you know what I mean? None of that matters. Yeah, at the end of the day, I want dudes who love this shit and you can't fake it. And Andre Carter said in our meeting today, he's like, listen, you could say you're all this and this and that, whatever. He goes, when I turn the film on, you're either a dog or you're not. When people turn my film on, they know exactly what the hell I am. I have no doubt. I can put my film in a middle school, an elementary school, an NFL meeting, a Hall of Fame meeting. They're going to see a dog. And so that's the guys I'm looking for. You know, guys like Fisk from Florida State. I watch a dude like him. He's a dog. I know he's a dog. There's a few other guys, a lot too. I like from UCLA, a young kid, dude's a dog. There's not many of them out there. So that's what I look for when I'm watching film. I don't give a shit if you can rush, got ability, whatever. The first thing I'm looking at is, 
Are they flying to the ball? Um, not just running to the ball, but flying to the ball, putting their body on the line, and um, all the rest of the stuff, you clean it up on the way. But I think it just starts with effort and effort and consistency. What did you think of the Holloway knockout? Holloway knockout? I mean, that was one of the coldest things I've ever seen with my two eyes. I mean, unbelievable. Um, being right there, seeing that in person was like, I mean, I'm like literally was just saying, oh my God, for 10 minutes straight. It's like, I could not believe that happened, but I'm a huge fan of both of those guys. I got so much respect. I mean, Justin Gage, he's a massive Raider fan. I've had him at games and everything. I met his family. Um, Holloway, I mean, he's, we've talked many times. He, was, he just posted a picture of me a couple days ago for the fight. I'm like, shit. Like, but I like both of these dudes. I don't know who to root for. Um, but my wife, I mean, she's, even though it pisses me off sometimes, she's always, seems to always be right. <laughs> and she's like a massive Max Holloway fan. She's like, no, I'm telling you, everybody's sleeping. Blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, the way he did it was probably the most iconic, one of the most iconic sports memories I've ever had in my life. I mean, you talk about, you know, being a Raider, being different, being a savage, that he literally had the fight already in the bag and said, all right, look, so we got 10 seconds, I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna literally swing until somebody <laughs> drops. He didn't care if it was him or the other guy, but that dude is a different breed and like, that's the shit I, I love watching. You know, I joke, I joke about it, but I'm serious. Like, I love violence. Like, I love watching. <laughs> it, there's nothing more pure than watching two savages go in there and like, there's nothing more to it. It's me or you. You know what I mean? That's how I approach my training. That's how I approach football. It's me versus that old lineman or shit. Y'all that blocked me with three, it's me versus all three of you motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I love about fighting so much. And Holloway is just a prime example of, I don't care. I'm not here to just win. I'm here to put a damn stamp on this and, and be the baddest dude in the game. And I mean, he proved it times 10, you know, on Saturday night. Do you, uh, do you like boxing too, Max? Are you gonna watch Saturday's fight with Haney and Garcia? Absolutely, I've been, you know, I'm a huge boxing fan. That's, I, I don't do a ton of MMA. I do majority of my training, especially with my knee and stuff. And y'all already know, like I spar and been doing boxing for a few years, but I do boxing majority of the time. Um, this off season, I've been sparring, like, not sparring, but boxing at least three, four times a week. Um, it's been huge with my cardio because I couldn't, I wasn't able to run for, I mean, almost two months. So I'm a huge boxing fan. Um, recently, I mean, I went and sparred Dominic Cruz about a week ago, me and him got after it. Um, and we're really swinging on each other and had some fun. I mean, I love that shit. And boxing is incredible. I think boxing is one of the most pure art forms um, in sports. and. You know, a guy like Haney versus Garcia, I've been watching the whole build up and the lead up to the fight. Um, I have a ton of respect for, for Devin Haney. I think he's gonna go in there and dominate. Um, he's, he's a hell of a fighter. You know, my favorite my favorite boxer right now is probably Gervonta. So Ooh. in general, I wanna see that fight. I mean, that's the fight to make. I think Haney's gonna go through him and then eventually, I mean, Haney and Gervonta are gonna have to meet. So that'll be interesting. It's starting to go from positive sports memories to, to bad ones, but a lot, a lot of talk about the Chiefs winning. Uh, on your field in, in the Super Bowl. And uh, Marquez Valdez can't with catching a flag. I know it's been a big talk in Kansas City about uh, doing that on the field. Is that something that was even on your guys' radar? And how much is that going to drive the offseason? I mean, if you're worried about and thinking about the other guys, I mean, you're wasting time and energy. At the end of the day, you wouldn't play a flag in a Raider logo. I guarantee you that. I promise you that. So it is what it is. They play it every year as a Super Bowl on somebody else's field. It happened to be our field. Uh, like I said, that nobody's playing the flag on our Raider logo. I promise you that. So it is what it is. I love it. I, shit. They already know what time it is. I don't have to say anything about the Chargers, about the Chiefs, about the Broncos, about any team, anybody that's going to see us. It starts week one. They know what type of time I'm on. They know what type of time we're going to be on. So we're going to see. You know, at the end of the day, it's all talk. And you, know, you try to go back and forth and say, oh, we're going to do this. Like, no, nah, like, I don't have to say nothing. So we're, we're more than excited and yeah, that, that's, that's, I'll leave that shit for y'all. You know I mean? Y'all can, can talk about all that other stuff, but it is what it is. Max, everyone knows about the physical work that you put in, uh, you know, every day or the year. Can you talk a little bit about how you prepare mentally in the off season uh, going into next year? Yeah, no doubt. I, I feel like the mental part of it is even more important than, than the physical. Um, like I've, I've said it a million times, but, um, you know, this game, 
has a ton of talented dudes, ton of dudes who can run four fours, four threes, jump out the roof, lift, do 40 reps on 225, all that shit is irrelevant when it really comes down to it. Um, the mental side of the game is, is honestly more important. Um, it's what's taking me to the, to the next level, and it's true confidence. It's feeding your brain and building your, your day-to-day routine to something that's elite of elite. And that's I always talk about 1% and more is acquired, and I always say these things, and you know I put it on every post and I put it out there, and people can think whatever they want or think it's cliche or just talk, but it's what I live. I see it everywhere I go. I put it on the back of my phone, I put it in my mirror, I put it in my cars, I put it everywhere, um, because you have to constantly train your mind for greatness. It doesn't just happen overnight. You gotta constantly feed your mind with positive and real, um, you know, breakdowns of who, where you're at and where you're going. And, um, you know, two of the greatest coaches I've ever had, Rich Passaccia, Rob Marinelli, they always talked about, and they still talk to me about this to this day, um, about the microscope and the telescope. The microscope's your day to day. You're 99% of the time, you're in today. All you're work, worried about is my workout today, my recovery, what I'm doing, boom, 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 boom. The telescope is the far, is where I know I'm going. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't get there without the microscope being in the, the day-to-day process and continuously getting better on a daily basis. So you gotta keep that in the back of your mind. Like, I know where I wanna go. I've said it publicly. I wanna be a Hall of Famer. I wanna, I'm, wanna win a Super Bowl. I wanna be the best to ever do it, period. And that's my telescope, but the microscope is what's most important. So yeah, I'm constantly training my mind not only from mentors that I have in my corner, from former players, former Hall of Famers, you know, with Tim Grover's in my corner and Aaron Donald's in my corner. Uh, I mean, Rob Marinelli is in my corner and Rick Slade in the weight room is in my corner. I got dudes who truly have done it at the highest level um, in all type of sports and act- in you know sports and activities in general. So I just try to surround myself with greatness at all times and I got like even off the field, Dana White's, um, Floyd Mayweather, so they're all in my Rolodex of people I talk to, and um, that's the only people I want to associate is people that are on my same wavelength. I think that's super important, and I've talked about it enough is who you surround yourself with. You know, for me, at the end of the day, if you're my family or whatever, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the people that are truly there for you. You know, you could have a label as you know, this is my brother, this is my, you know, this is my dad, this is whatever. But if they're not treating you right, then what, what's the point, you know what I mean? It's just a label, real family, real blood, is being there when it, when times aren't great, you know what I mean? Being there every single day, regardless of what's going on. So that's how my circle is. It's all people that are chasing greatness every single day and have already achieved it, but are still chasing more. And that's who I surround myself with every single day. And um, that's all that matters to me. And my obviously my girls, my, my wife and my daughter. So um, yeah, you gotta be constantly curious and constantly challenging yourself. Um, with not only your work ethic and the physical part, but your mind as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you.